Hey guys, it is officially lit. Oh, officially lit. This is Lars. I'm checking in, trying to do something a little bit different. So here we are, starting soon. I'm gonna do this this way. Hopefully my reactions aren't too overbearing with my overbearing personality. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be good. In case you were wondering, this is going to be good. This is going to be real good. Hello, and welcome back to another April Update live preview, the content that we'll be deploying to Destiny next week. On April 12th, we're going to infuse this game with new things to do, new things to earn. We'll also be changing the way the Crucible and the Sandbox behaves, and that will be the theme of today's show. I'm Deej from Bungie. I will be your host, and I am joined on the subject matter expert couch by my old friend Lars Bakken. How's it going, Deej? It's, it's motherfucking Lars! I'm happy to be here. So uh, if uh, this is the first time that you're being introduced to Lars, I would very happily and friendly say, where have you been? Uh, <laughs> Lars has been uh, a perennial spokesperson for Bungie. Uh, you and I have been on many adventures together. To Germany. To Germany, to E3. We've survived battles, both yes. foreign and domestic. Yes. And uh, we, uh, we were at um, the uh, Red Bull uh, reveal of That's Rift right. down yep, in Los Angeles. With Rift the, show. That was great. Yeah, that was cool. So um, got to do some shout casting. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. In our way. In our, in our own in our <laughs> own special way, we did in fact get to do some shout casting, and uh, we'll be doing a little bit of dev developer commentary also today. Um, we're going to be hosting uh, an all warlock exhibition of some different modes in the Crucible, so that we can show you live exactly how uh, some of the different weapons and subclasses in Destiny will behave after we deploy the April update. Yep. So uh, before we begin. Let's uh, help ourselves Toast. to a little bit of room temperature water. You know, Deej, when I'm not designing video games, I'm drinking room temperature water. And room temperature water is never more delicious than it is out of an official... I'm going to throw this out there. All if they're doing an all Warlock, Warlock uh, exhibition, we're not really here to sell mugs. Warlocks yeah. are about to what get are smashed. To do today? What are we going to talk about Just today? give you a heads up. We're going to talk about uh, some of the changes we've made. So I know people have been really interested in what we've been doing yes. uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we're going to talk about the resurrection or revive changes. So that's that's what you have basically in every PV activity and also in the 3v3 PVP modes like skirmish and elimination and salvage. Trials of Osiris. Trials of Osiris, exactly. Okay. Um, so we've got some changes there. Yeah. We've made some changes to the special and heavy ammo economies as well. Okay. And then we've also made a bunch of changes to the way the rewards work too, just across the board in the Crucible. And you know, generally you've gotten some of those updates already, but yeah. we'll talk specifically about the Crucible stuff today. Yeah, and we've talked uh, that Destiny is about to become a more rewarding game. That's definitely one of the goals of the April update. Uh, we've given a lot of information about the fact that there are many paths that you can follow as a player so that you can reach max light, uh, which is now 335. That's right. Uh, traditionally, uh, you know, getting people to play hard mode raids with you or playing Trials of Osiris or Iron Banner have been some really great ways to max your light, but there are many more ways to do that in the April update, and uh, the Crucible is uh, certainly a viable option for uh, even solo players who aren't used to building a dream team to tackle some of those end game activities. Absolutely. So we'll get into all the details. Uh, what should we tackle first? I think we should look at the revive changes because I think people are probably going to be pretty interested in seeing that. Okay. So, so we'll do that. Uh, we're going to, uh, in just a moment, we'll cut to uh, an exhibition that we're hosting right here in our studio. We have some players who are all suited up as warlocks, and uh, they are playing in a test environment. So this is a very uh, controlled 
environment where we can show off some of the different ways in which the game will behave. And you'll you'll see interesting things like the fact that the game is set to last for five hours, which is not reasonable yeah. normally, but that's what clues you into it's a develop. These are all program. for the purposes of science and demonstration. So uh, Lars, you have a, a captive audience here. We, uh, <laughs> We're, we're locked in what we call an educational ceasefire. Yep. So uh, exactly what would you like for our warlock combatants to demonstrate So right the first thing I want to do is have the other team uh, kill everyone but uh, the main person we're watching right now. So they're going to knock everyone else down, okay. see some thorn shots. There we go. We'll and ceasefire. Okay, ceasefire now. Now we're going to have Victor, our guy behind the scenes. He's wearing Light Beyond Nemesis, which is the fast revive exotic. Yep. You'll notice a couple things there. First of all, um, he had to go in a little closer mm -hmm. to get the revive. It took a little bit longer. And oh. the other thing you just saw there, yep. which Victor was trying to show us, is that even with the fast revive exotic, like Light Beyond Nemesis or Cresta Alpha Loopy, um, you can no longer sprint revive. Okay. So that's a big change for Trials players. Okay. So uh, we're going to uh, just give some extemporaneous commentary as uh, these players duke it out. So uh, on my mark, we will commence the fighting. <laughs> it's ready. Aim, fire! Okay, and uh, have at it, everyone. And look at that, he's down right away. Uh, so <laughs> we have our warlocks. They're duking it out on skirmish. Uh, reviving each other is a huge part of this game type, uh, as the other game types you mentioned, yes. 3v3 game types. Yep. So what was the essential design motivation that prompted you to make the changes to the way the revive works? So, you know, we, we were seeing some really interesting things when people were doing revives, and, and we wanted to sort of... Uh, make it a little bit risk, more risk versus reward. So that's why we made some changes like the overshield you get is a little less powerful now, okay. the shield that you get when you revive and then you get revived. Um, and the other thing we've done is we've taken in the distance a little bit and made it a little bit longer to do the actual revive itself. So you have to get a little bit closer. It yeah. takes you a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and, and that's the major change. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that we did that you're not going to see in this current game is in Trials, yes. we added two seconds to uh, the revive timer. So there's that timer that won't allow you to be revived by your teammate once you first go down, yeah. and normally that's five seconds. Okay. And then when you go down in that round, we add another five seconds. So what we did is we added two seconds onto that. Does that make sense? So I get killed. Uh, my teammates have to wait for seven full seconds Correct. before they can revive me. And then if you die again, we add an additional seven seconds. So the second time you die in a round, it would be 14, 14. seconds. Yeah. And then 21, and then so on. Correct. Get yeah. out your slide rules or memorize <laughs> right. your multiplication Start doing tables. Math. I really wish I'd paid more attention in math. But, uh, you know. The, the, the basics are that it's going to take you a little bit longer. You're going to have to be a little bit closer. You're not as... Uh, strong when you come out of a revive okay. the overshield is a little less yeah uh, all of those things together with the additional time uh it makes revive more of a more of a choice mm -hmm. you know you don't you can still revive someone in a bad situation we can't stop people from doing that mm -hmm. however we can make it you know a little more painful so there's so many different sources of information that we can use to uh, arrive at you know the inspiration for these changes uh, we've got data from our user research team as yeah. to how people play in the game environment. Uh, we've got the anecdotal feedback from members of our community. Yep. Uh, people like M. Tasht, sure. who we met down in Los Angeles. Very kind we were, gentleman. Yes, he's, he's, he's a gentleman and a fierce competitor. And uh, he shared with us uh, some of his own personal feedback yeah. about how he felt Revive could work a little bit better and be a little less detrimental to the combat meta in Trials of Osiris. Yeah. So maybe a good way to uh, see how this behaves in Trials of Osiris is uh, to put a price on that guy's head. Uh, so uh, we're gonna call it right now, M. Tasht, if you're in chat, uh, we are putting a price on your head, we are putting a bounty on you uh, for the upcoming Trials of Osiris that will happen after we deploy the April update. Yep. So uh, April update lands on Tuesday, that's yes. April 12th. Yep. Uh, the uh, following Trials of Osiris will be April 15th, and we are going to go in and uh, hold court and uh, we'll see how the new revive mechanics work, and uh, we'll get some of your insights as to how you think the new combat meta plays out. Uh, I'm going to put uh, M. Tash into the community seat. We'll leave it up to you to choose who represents cool. Bungie. Okay, and, that sounds uh, good. We'll see I'll figure if we can uh, carry him to the lighthouse. Yeah. Well, well he's he's probably going to be doing the maybe carry. Maybe the other way maybe, around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well let's uh, let's make sure that we don't equip him with uh, <laughs> with lead anchors. And we'll right. give him some we'll give him some good teammates, and we'll see how all that plays out. <clears throat> uh, and then, of course. 
in addition to uh, you know, user research data or anecdotal player feedback, there's also our own personal experiences in playing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When we, you know, we play the game ourselves at home. You know, we we listen to the feedback, we read the forums, mm -hmm. we get internal feedback. You know, we play test all the time. We play yeah. test every day, yeah. and we're in this really great position internally where we can we can make changes. We did a lot of different things to revive on to uh, before we got to where we uh, solved it for you know okay. the April update. Uh, but it is, you know, it's a continuing thing, right? We yeah. play the game constantly, we get feedback, and we try and make the best changes that we can, and then put it out there and, and again, listen to your feedback and okay. see, see how those changes are, are going. This is a perfect segue to uh, the next thing I think we should talk about. Uh, we have uh, certainly encountered a lot of feedback about the changes that we have made to the ammunition economy. So here's a sniper rifle. Uh, there was a sniper rifle. There's a sniper rifle. And, um, which one is that? Which is the, that? appears mm. to be a vanguard weapon. Yes. Could be thousand yard stare. The <laughs> uh, the eponymous and ever ever constant. We thousand won't yard talk stare. about that gun. We'll let we'll, we'll let, let John, yeah, we'll let John Wisniewski that. talk about that gun. But um, that uh, that warlock had special ammo on its character, and uh, we changed the way a lot of that behaves in the game. I understand you're changing it again. Yeah. So what's up? So we went through some really um, interesting changes internally, and we, st we, know we started talking about when we released the last update, and we made it so that special didn't spawn with the character in the 3v3 modes. Yep. Um, what we saw, you know, uh, was that the community is going to use anything at their disposal to get around some of those rules, and we have exotics that get around those rules, and you know, immediately that became the way to play Icebreaker, with ice sidearm, sidearms, sidearms, okay. and um, you know, those are things we, those are inherent to Destiny, and they're they're good things in Destiny. And what we wanted to do is take a step back and go, okay, is there another way that we can control the special ammo economy that isn't, and the heavy ammo ammo economy, which we'll talk about in a second, okay. that doesn't do those kinds of things so players have to use exotics to get or a sidearm or give whatever, them to options get, let them choose their ideal loadout exactly okay. and so starting with this update yep. um, across the board we made changes everywhere with the exception of uh, uh, elimination and mayhem we've we've made it so that you spawn with special ammo everywhere so sorry I take that back you do spawn with special ammo and elimination as well okay but across the board yeah. you spawn in every game type with special ammo at the beginning again, okay. like we previously had it. So if you're in the Crucible, at the top of the match, you get special ammo. Correct. Okay, so Everywhere. Our, our original uh, idea was that we didn't want snipers spawn killing people right off the starting line. Right. What's our philosophy on that now? So the interesting thing is, because of Icebreaker, we couldn't actually control that specific thing. Yeah. And so what we wanted to do was try and control it in a different way. So now special ammo comes in much later into the match. Yeah. Uh, so it comes in three minutes in. Uh, you'll see the special ammo crates around as we're as we're looking at this uh, match that's going on right now. Special ammo comes in three minutes in, yeah. and then it comes two minutes after the fact. Okay. And that, in combination with all of the things we did with uh, the PVP, or sorry, the sandbox team, John, he's going to be on next, talking about the specific things they did on the weapon side, the things that we did on our side to control the ammo, having it come in three minutes in. Yep. Having the box then spawn additionally two minutes later. Yep. Uh, means that there's less special ammo in the in the match period. So choose your weapon carefully, choose your shots carefully. And we do find that if you're using, when we play test internally, when yeah. you're using these changes and you're using a special ammo uh, or a special weapon, you find that you have less of that ammunition now pretty consistently and you're thinking, you continually have that thought, oh, I don't have special right now, I need to go seek it out. When is the next box gonna drop? Sure, sure. Okay, um, so talk to me about heavy. How's heavy different? So heavy is is another thing that we, you know, across the board, we wanted to, again, make it feel the same no matter where you go in the Crucible. It's going to behave similarly. So heavy only comes in once a match now. Really? It comes in at the five minute mark. Okay. And then it never comes back. So you get one chance. One chance You get one heavy. taste. And so what we, what we see with that, which has been really healthy, is that if you do have, uh, you know, a very powerful heavy, you know, a, Harold Coulomb's Terminus, for example. <laughs> John will talk about in a second what he's done on his side. Again, we work with the Sandbox team to make changes, not just on our side to control the ammo economy, but those guys as well to control how ammo behaves in the weapons themselves. Yep. Uh, we wanted to sort of tamp down that stuff and not have Heavy continually come back. Now again, if you're a fan of Mayhem, we're not touching 
uh, mayhem, how mayhem comes in pretty continuously. We're leaving that alone because mayhem is mayhem. It's, it's just awesome. designed to be explosive. Yeah, it's, it's designed to be, to be exactly what you call it. Pure chaos. It's pure mayhem. That's what yeah. we want. But everywhere else in the Crucible, we wanted Heavy to only um, show up the one time. Again, that, that doesn't affect elimin or, sorry, uh, elimination or trials. So that still comes you know, when it comes. And that is... Uh, Once the first team to reach three wins, okay. the Heavy will show up. That's and the then it never round. comes back again. Never yep. comes back again. Correct. Never going to get it. Okay. Um, and then uh, as, this, uh, as this round comes to uh, completion, uh, we'll see them enter uh, the post-game We'll see them look at their post-game carnage report and see what rewards they get. Um, talk to us about what uh, a Crucible Warrior can expect from the Crucible all up in terms of how rewarding an experience it is. Yeah, so, you know, we, we've heard the comments. We know that the Legendary stream was a little light. Mm -hmm. um, we've increased Legendaries across the board in all of the Crucible. Okay. And that's beyond what we're doing everywhere else. So the Crucible, like you said at the top of the show, is going to be a more rewarding place now we're not going to change the way this screen behaves necessarily, and this, you know, this, these are new characters, so we'll see. Ah, awesome! This is a Nothing test environment. Up. It's this a is test a test environment. environment. Yeah, exactly. Um, but like, people should know that they're going to be seeing more legendaries. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of things they can do to get themselves up to 335. Okay. So uh, playing the shacks. The, the Shaq's weekly bounties. Yeah. Completing that each week will get you to something that drops up to 335. Okay. Uh, up to 335. Up to 335. And a point of clarification, uh, last week we talked about the fact that the weekly featured Crucible activity is one of the ways in which you can get one of the new Sterling treasure boxes. So in the lower left-hand corner of your director, on the top level of your director, there's always a weekly featured activity, yes. an invitation to say, come play Control or Rift or what have you. So if you play one match of that activity, you get a Sterling Treasure Box. But That's also, cool. Okay. Yeah, nice, right? right? right. Yeah, here, have some, have, <laughs> have some treasure. Have, have some treasure, have some loot. Um, and uh, then if you go and interact with Shax, he's got his own quest line. Yep. It refreshes on a weekly basis. That's more of an investment. Yeah. It is. It takes a little longer, and that's true. It's but the people who match. really enjoy doing the Shacks Weekly, yeah. we wanted there to be a way outside of Trials, outside of Iron Banner, that was a weekly place for you to get drops up to 335. Mm -hmm. And and the Shacks Weekly is, is the way to do that. Okay. Uh, talk to me about uh, some of the other endgame activities that can also get a player to 335. So Trials of Osiris mm -hmm. uh, will get you up there. The, the wonderful treasure chest that's uh, on Mercury, if you get to Mercury... Uh, we've also uh, opened up what you can get from the Mercury chest now. I believe it drops armor and weapons, and those will drop up to 335. So, okay. uh, And then the bounties themselves will drop up to 330. Okay. So if you do the bounties, they will drop up to 330. Treasure chest will drop up to 335. Yes. And the other thing we've done with Trials is we allowed you to repeat on a daily basis the, uh, I think it's called His Eye Upon You bounty. You should, we should fact check that in the patch notes, but yeah. the, one of the bounties, one of the, you'll be able to do it every day. Every so you can okay. keep going back each day. If, if you love playing Trials, and that, uh, again, the Trials bounty stuff can drop up to 3.30. So that's another good way to, okay. to keep playing. Iron Banner. Iron Banner, we've made some good changes there as well. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've looked at how the economy works. I believe Jeremiah, who is our resident Iron Banner expert, he removed the legend, or yes, the legendary engrams out of the stream. So now, if you were supposed to get a legendary engram, you'll now get an Iron Banner drop instead. We wanted to make it all about the Iron Banner gear that's dropping. So that's what you're going to be getting. Okay. Um, at the rank three and the rank five packages, you're still guaranteed to get an artifact and a ghost. And now those are 320. So they will drop at 320. So if you haven't gotten up to 320 yet, you're going to get a guaranteed 320 artifact and Ghost just from getting to, to rank 5 in, in the next Iron Banner. Okay. And then if I uh, get my rank 5 package, uh, that stuff will drop up to... Up to 335. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And cool. the last thing, I think people have talked about this a lot. I've yeah. seen on the forums. There was a bounty uh, that oh, yeah. re required 2,500 oh, yeah. points and a win. Yeah. And now that is 1,500 points and a match completion. Okay. So it'll be much easier to get. And uh, we've heard you. We're sorry. Um, but we're making changes to well, make the go. experience better. Never, for never be sorry about making the game better. Wow. So sure. um, that's all. That all sounds like good stuff to me. I certainly love the Crucible. Uh, I'm not amazing in there, but I've got a full set of Iron Banner gear. So you're looking good. Yeah, I, I feel. I'm feeling good, <laughs> Lars. I'm feeling good. Here, let's have another Toast. sip of room temperature room water. Room temperature water. Mm. Mm. 
And um, is there anything else you would tell uh, our audience about uh, changes to the overall Crucible? You know, there's there's probably too many to go into on this stream. Of the course. patch notes will be coming in the next uh, day or so, right? Uh, what we'll do is we will, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly do a recap of this show. That? And, uh, you know, we'll have a, a few additional details uh, on the Bungie blog tomorrow. And uh, then we will, on April 12th, gotcha. okay. when the yep. uh, April update deploys, we will certainly have the customary patch notes and, uh, you know, people who love to, you know, pour through the changes that we've made and pick through it with a fine comb. Uh, can go through and they can see every last little bullet yeah, point. Yeah, and there's a lot of, I could, you know, I could spend two hours talking about the changes we made, but it's better to... It just doesn't sound like a very entertaining stream. <laughs> no, we don't no, have that much room temperature no. water, man. No, we don't. Okay. But there's a ton of good details in the patch notes, things that I glossed over. You'll get much okay. more detailed, uh, yeah. you know, notes on those. Well, as the show says, this is an April update preview, so that's a good glimpse at some of the different things yeah. that you've done. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'll thank you on behalf of uh, the people that tweet at us and talk to us on those forums for, you know, caring about their opinions and, yeah. uh, and factoring that into your process. So hopefully this improves your uh, crucible lifestyle. And as always, we'll be listening to the way you react and respond to these things. Uh, I'm going to thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thanks, Deej. Thank you for My all the pleasure. hard work that you put into this, as always. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're not done. Uh, coming up just after uh, this station break is uh, we're going to have designer John Wesniewski come out and talk about the arsenal in Destiny and how a lot of the different weapons that you love to use or hate to get killed by are about to go back to the workbench and be adjusted in the interest of balance. So uh, enjoy some gameplay. And uh, we're going to welcome yet another subject matter expert to the couch right now. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Watch them fight. All I'm saying is, so far, so good. They're really trying, the thing that they don't get credit for is they're really trying to balance this shit out. And they got Lars on the camera finally. Not me, Lars, but the real Lars. Not the real Lars, but the real Lars. Okay. All right. Introduce you and to welcome to the show, John Wesniewski. How's it going, Deej? Good to see you, man. Good to be here. So uh, for those uh, members of our audience who aren't used to reading your uh, weapon update previews or, you know, the people who don't pour through the patch notes, uh -huh. uh, give us a sense of what you do at Bungie. Uh, so I'm a designer on the gameplay design team, okay. um, and I, uh, I basically, uh, my area is weapons. So I think of new weapons, I think about old weapons, I think about how weapons are behaving in all activities, and uh, I do a lot of planning and work to keep those fresh and new. Yeah, spend a lot of time in uh, our test labs, uh, getting Absolutely. punished by the PvP testers that we have participating in this <laughs> Warlock exhibition. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we certainly uh, we play a lot here at Bungie to keep each other honest and to settle a lot of the debates that you all have on the forums. So the, when they have conversations about weapons being overpowered, we go into our own labs. We participate in our own gameplay to see how we feel about all that stuff. Yes, we do. And today you're going to tell us how we feel about all that stuff. I've got my magical clicker here. All right. Uh, so we're just going to run through a lot of the different uh, categories of weapons. And John is going to give you uh, a sense of what has changed and why we've made some of those changes. Uh, I'm gonna pledge that uh, tomorrow we'll publish a full write-up from you yep. where you uh, tackle every single archetype of weapon as well as uh, some of the different weapons from the exotic and legendary catalog. And we'll give you uh, all of the gritty details followed up by the full patch notes later. But today, here's an opportunity for you to get to know somebody who does this sort of work, uh, understand you know, how we think and how we approach this stuff and just get a basic sense of what's coming. So yep. we'll start with my personal favorite. We got the uh, auto, rifles. auto rifles. What have we done to auto rifles? So auto rifles. So yeah, like you said, we'll, we'll keep this all short and sweet in the interest of uh, moving on to some combat and seeing these things in action. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have the full details published tomorrow. So yeah, auto rifles. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the high rate of fire, uh, style of auto rifle, which is like your Doctrine of Passing, your Armadius D, your Necrochasm. Your bullet hose, um, if you will. Bullet hose. Uh, the base damage is coming down just a tiny bit. Okay. Um, and then to offset that, the low rate of fire, so your Suros Regime, uh, your new Queen's auto rifle, her memory, yeah. the base damage is coming up a tiny bit. Okay. Um, and these, in these changes are not intended to uh, move people off of these weapons. They're just intended to give you more options within the archetype. More of a logical counter yep. for each other. Okay, cool. And uh, what are we doing to the pulse rifles? Pulse rifles. So uh, we're only touching the low rate of fire archetype. Okay. So in game right now, that would be like the spare change. 
Um, and the base damage is coming up a tiny bit. Okay. So yeah. if slow and steady wins the race, you're going to make those bullets just a little bit more powerful. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we have the hand cannons. Hand cannons. Um, so all we're doing for the hand cannons right now is we're increasing your ammo inventory. Okay. Uh, so we've noticed that in uh, some PvP games where you're on a streak or you're you know you're using last word and just blowing through your ammo, you tend to run dry. Um, and then in PvE encounters as well, you know more attrition style encounters like yeah. strikes and raids. Yeah. Um, people tend to be running dry as well. So anyone running a hand cannon now is going to have uh, a significant amount more ammo in their backpack, okay. be less time spent uh, running around the field looking for ammo. Nice. So so a six gun is still a six gun, but yep. you can reload it more often with what you have on your person. Correct. Okay. Deeper pockets. Yep. Uh, fusion rifles. Fusion rifles. Um, so this time all we did with fusion rifles was we just gave them a blanket stability increase. So that's better stability across the board for fusion rifles. And what that means is that uh, as as the projectiles leave the barrel in the burst, you're going to get less severe kick, which mm -hmm. means a tighter grouping of projectiles, which means more accuracy. Cool. Sniper rifles. Sniper rifles. Constant topic of conversation in the yeah. community. So how are we addressing a lot of the things that they've said about the long barrel? A lot of people using sniper rifles these days. Yeah, using them as almost like medium range battle rifles. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we saw some of that in the uh, the gameplay earlier. So yeah, that's that seems, that seems to be a, a play style that's settling in the PvP right now, which is that people are using their snipers uh, as sort of like close to medium range combat tools. Um, the, the goals for a sniper rifle has always been, you know, precision, long range, paced combat that uh, rewards thumb skill with high damage to precision targets. Yeah. So uh, we're leaning into that. Um, and so to, to change, uh, the changes that we're doing for sniper rifles is, so there's zoom distance on uh, scopes and there's three scopes that are the shortest zoom distance and we push that distance out a tiny bit. So okay. it's, not very, it's not very much, but it is enough to sort of shake up your, your usual sight lines a little bit that you're used to in PvP. So you in can see PvP further map. with those scopes Correct. now, just to yeah. sort of you make go those, a little bit further. those, yeah. those um, close range engagements a little right. bit more clumsy. Right, it's, and it's a give and take. So okay. uh, your, close range, your, your ability to close range snapshot is a little bit harder, but mm -hmm. with the range increase, you get a little bit more accuracy okay. as well. Um, and so that's just the uh, long view. SLR-10, the ambush, and the short gaze okay. that are getting pushed out a tiny bit. Um, we've also added two frames of zoom time to the uh, uh, as you go from hip into zoom. Mm -hmm. So that's slightly slower. It's like just two frames, but yeah. it does make a difference when you're doing the combat sniping. Yeah. Um, and I know everyone out there is thinking, well, that's okay, I've got snapshot. Well, sorry to tell you that uh, snapshot now grants you a 20% uh, increase to your zoom time instead of 30%, it was 30%. This is the role of the sniper on the battlefield, though. I mean, they call that gun patience and time for a reason. Right. Uh, right. You know, in, in, a, in a real world combat meta, the sniper is not usually dancing around and jumping with a big heavy gun. They're clumsy to use, they're heavy to carry, and it's all about the precision kill, choosing that right moment and putting your shots where they count. Right, yeah. And then the last little change we made there is um, we reduced stability across the board a little bit on snipers, and so, Again, if you're lining up your shots and you're, uh, you're, you know, you're doing your combat breathing and, yeah. and taking your time, uh, that you should feel unaffected. But if you're doing the rapid, yeah. trying to like two-tap a body in PvP and get those quick kills, um, you're gonna be, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to realign on your sure. target. Just a tiny Big bit. gun, it's got a kick. Yep. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the uh, weapons in the uh, exotic catalog now. Uh, this is... Uh, extremely popular, the, uh, the Mita right. multi-tool. In fact, let's take a look at how popular it's been over time. So when we launched the Taken King, uh, this gun was not brought forward originally. Right, uh, its, its investment attack value was not at the levels of the other weapons. So it was not a year two weapon as soon as year two began. All so that where on changed, that graph do you think that happened? Uh, probably where you hit that wall. Uh, so you can, see, uh, you can see where December happens. Right. We reprised this exotic weapon for year two in December. That's when it vaulted up like a rocket out of obscurity back into relevance and uh, you can see those those weekly upticks where it's being used in activities like iron banner yep so mita multi-tool is compared to every other uh, primary weapon in the combat sandbox in pvp is by far the most popular gun absolutely so what are we doing to mitigate this what are we doing to make it less popular or to make other weapons in the primary arsenal a more viable option? Um, so the only thing we're doing to Mita is uh, we're removing high caliber rounds as the as an intrinsic property of the weapon. Okay. So other than that, the weapon still 
plays and feels exactly the same for the user to shoot. Um, it just sucks a little bit less to be shot at, shot yeah. at with it. Right? It's not going to disrupt your targets as much as it right. used to. Right. So there's a, there's a little bit more opportunity to uh, yeah shoot back if you if you feel that's necessary or okay. disengage. Okay. Um, and yes, and speaking of the popularity graph, uh, the the reason we didn't hit Mida too hard is because it is popular, and you know on the gameplay team we actually consider it to be a relatively balanced gun. Yeah. So we didn't want to we didn't want to hit it too hard. I don't use it. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's not a warlock, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's yeah, exactly. I wear void fangs. My yeah. entire crucible strategy is get killed, respawn, throw a grenade. Yeah. Get killed, respawn, throw a grenade. Throw a grenade. You saw that right. one coming, huh? Yep. Okay. So uh, up next, we'll talk about my own personal favorite, uh, the Soros regime. Yeah. Check it out. The Soros. Like Darth Vader's Ferrari. Uh, yeah, so, so by proxy, because the Soros is in the family of low rate of fire auto rifles, mm -hmm. uh, it's got a buff. So it's going to be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and so to address that, so a lot of people tend to use the spinning up option. So there's two options, sure. spinning up and focus fire. Yep. A lot of people use the spinning up option, um, and with the base damage increase, that was just a little bit too deadly in our play tests. And uh, so what we did is spinning up now kicks in a little bit later in the mag, about four shots. Okay. So you still have the same gameplay, same behavior from that perk, but it just kicks in a little bit later. Yeah, that's my finishing move. You know, when that when that poor soul is trying to run away from me to get right. around that corner, you know, and then it spins up right at the end and you know put yeah. it down. So that happens four bullets later. About in the four clip. bullets later. Yeah, okay. and that's. Not what I heard your finishing move was, by the way. Oh, yeah, would you? Yeah. Uh, so, and then the <laughs> focus fire option now uh, got a range buff as well. So, um, so you get a pretty significant boost to your range stat if you're going to select focus fire. And then if you pick the other range boosting options in the talent grid in conjunction with that, you'll be able to max out the range value of Suro. So that if you, if you are the type of player who likes to use the, the really slow focus fire option, um, you can use range to your advantage now. Okay, cool. And uh, moving right along to the Hawk, Hawk Moon. Moon. Yeah, uh, simple change with this one made a big difference. Uh, we just increased the range a little bit, so now the effective range has gone out, and uh, the general accuracy of the gun is a little bit better because of it as well. Okay, cool. And uh, it's uh, Cowboy Cousin, the yep. last word. The last word. What happened to the last word? Uh, so I'll just come out and say it. We, we took the damage down on last word, um, and that's only in the last word uh, perk. So it's the perk on the grid called the last word. Yeah. That, uh, that perk gives you bonus damage, bonus stability, bonus accuracy, and bonus aim assist when you're firing from the hip. So, yeah, that's pretty, yep. pretty mean. And there's, there's a whole bunch of players out there who've gotten really good at hitting headshots from the hip with this gun. And with that damage boost, that turns into a two-shot kill in PvP yeah. um, at a full-auto hand cannon rate of fire. And okay. the time to kill is just a little too fast. So we pulled the damage off. It's still a three-shot kill. You still get the aim assist. You still get the stability. Yeah, still sounds pretty mean. We'll uh, we will take a look at how it performs in uh, our all warlock exhibition here. We'll uh, yep. throw them into some rumble combat. Every warlock for themselves, and mm -hmm. we will prove. Please do not panic. Please do not flee. Uh, we'll prove that the uh, last word is still a viable yep. option. What's next? Uh, what is next? Uh, oh, What's that? look at that! Oh. Uh, everyone's favorite weapon to oh. get killed by. It's the, pointing the right at my yeah, head. Yeah, look at that. It is. It's yeah. pointing. It's pointing right at your head. It's yeah, like okay. That. Now you're you're now being held at thorn point. Check yeah. that out. Uh, so talk to us about the thorn. What have you done? Uh, so, well, so first and foremost, I should say that there's been uh, no investment attack value increase on thorn. So it should be still considered a year one weapon. Still a year one weapon. Still a year one weapon. Okay. Um, however, no one's really talking about it. No one's really using it. Yeah. So uh, we did want to get some more eyes on the gun, some more hands on the gun. So we're talking about like. Damage increase, increasing the magazine, yeah, okay. uh, slightly speed up the rate of fire, uh -huh. uh, the poison lasts a little longer, oh, does more damage. Cool. I'm totally joking yeah, right now. he's completely kidding. He's completely kidding. What did you really uh, do to Thorn? <laughs> so we, um, we minimized the dot damage. So the dot is the damage over time. So each, okay. each pulse is going to do the absolute minimum damage we can do in PvP. Okay. Um, we reduced the duration of the pulse. So instead of doing six pulses, it now does four. Um, and we've actually done another pass on the intensity of the, the poison screen effects. So when you're shot by it, it's a little bit less intense you're on your screen. You're not completely blind? It's not like someone right. hit you with a green yep. flashbang? Yep, and again, like, okay. same, same, uh, same methodology applied to the, uh, to the MITA changes, where we're trying to preserve the, the feeling of using the weapon, yeah. because that feels good to some people out there, even though most people on the internet hate those people. Um, 
we want the we want the weapon to still feel awesome to use and then suck a little bit less to have it used on you gotcha okay icebreaker icebreaker uh, so once again, I should say that uh, the investment attack value of Icebreaker is not coming forward. So Icebreaker is, is still a year one weapon. Yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, to sort of pivot off of what Lars was saying earlier about uh, the intended ammo economy changes, yeah, um, we had to make some changes to Icebreaker as well. Icebreaker was uh, making it pretty difficult for us to tune the am ammo economy in mm -hmm. PvP. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we did is uh, we basically addressed the issue where players could... Um, charge up their special ammo with Icebreaker, uh, get killed, die, jump off a cliff, whatever, and then swap to another special weapon and have that ammo persist. So yeah. that no longer happens. When you switch away from Icebreaker, you lose all your ammo and have to find it again on the map. Okay. Um, and then playing into the Icebreaker fantasy as well, uh, we wanted to uh, really, really sell the fact that this is a long-range uh, heavy weapon, so the handling came down. The zoom distance went out, yeah. Um, but the exotic behavior is still there. Okay. So if you are uh, if you are the PVE style player where you're camping on the hill, annihilating the battlefield, uh, you won't feel the burn on this one at all. Cool. Okay. You know, there's an interesting uh, point to be made there that you know we had Lars in to talk about crucible activities and ammo economies. Now mm -hmm. you're talking about weapon balance and how ammo economies affect that. You guys work very closely together. It's yeah. not like you all live in your own personal vacuums. Where it's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm adjusting guns. What are you doing? It's like, I'm adjusting the crucible. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. See you on the other side of that. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. the changes Hope that you guys make. we don't screw make, this up. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, the changes I made completely ruin everything you were hoping to accomplish. Yeah. So you guys are, I mean, you know, I, walk, I get to walk around the studio floor. I get to walk around where you guys sit. You work very closely together. All of these changes, like the things that go into the up, April update, it's no mistake that you're on the same show correct because yeah. the, you know you guys pretty much work hand in hand to make sure that these changes all sort of complement each other yeah. if Lars changes something it's going to have a direct impact on the things that you're making yeah and it, so I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the ammo changes that we made on our side too so um, so it's, it's a it works the same way across the board so the same thing with sidearms like uh, if, if you swap away from a sidearm yeah um, then you're gonna lose your your special ammo you have to refine the ammo on the map in order to power up whatever weapon that you that you switch from. Um, and then the total inventory amount for uh, heavy machine guns, sniper rifles, and shotguns got reduced across the board as well. Okay. So you're gonna, you, you won't be able to carry as much in your backpack. So in some PvP games, some players are really good at controlling um, the, you know, the spawn rate of ammo crates and they're able to run around and, and grab ammo and be pretty stockpiled. So we've limited the amount that they can stockpile. Um, and then to offset that change in PvE, we've increased the drop rate of special ammo bricks. Okay. So in PvE, you'll have less in your backpack, but you'll see more bricks drop. You know, a constant question from the community is why not just let PvP be its own thing and let PvE sort of exist independently? Why do you try to balance weapons so that they behave exactly similarly in both areas of, you know, activities? Um, yeah, speaking to that, so that, I mean, it's there's really just sort of like a, a high-level global philosophy we have about uh, destiny design and... Um, and to me, personally, I think it's one of the greatest things about our game, which is that your guardian is your guardian everywhere you go. So everywhere, every activity you go into, you're bringing the same, the same tool set, and it behaves the same in, in those areas. And so, and I know what to expect. Yeah. When, I, so, when I achieve body memory with that weapon, right. I'm never going to be surprised. Like, that never happens in the Crucible. You know, it's like I was up against a raid boss. The chips were down. Right. Okay. Right. And, um, and it's, it's not always one-to-one, -one, but we try to keep it as consistent as possible. And we want, like, for example, like... Like if you throw your grenade and, and you know about the, the the detonation radius of the grenade, like you want that to be consistent regardless of what target you're throwing it at. Okay. Um, and yeah, you just really want to build a lot of muscle memory and fluidity with your with your loadout regardless of where you are. Zen, if you will. Zen. Okay, cool. Uh, and then uh, let's see. Let's round this out and let's get uh, into the Crucible to uh, visit with our Warlocks and see how they're doing. Uh, Dreg's Promise? Dreg's Promise. So uh, quick change to this one. Projectiles now tra track based on ADS lock. Okay. So as uh, as you aim down the sights and then shoot, uh, the uh, Dreg's Promised projectiles are going to just do a little bit better job of tracking. Okay. And uh, we have Telesto. Telesto. So Telesto, we fixed an issue where the projectiles weren't uh, recognizing player faction, so friendly faction. Yeah. So if you shot your Telesto at uh, your ally mm -hmm. or your ally's Ward of Dawn, um, the projectiles would just vanish. Okay. And so now the projectiles know what to do, and what they do is they correctly attach 
to those targets. So they can attach to your friend, they can attach to your friend's Word of Dawn, and they will explode, but they will not do damage to your friends. So if you have, <laughs> if you like I do, yeah, if you're sure, playing, sure. if you're playing with uh, with a guy like Grant, yeah, who uh, likes to charge into the fray of battle, yeah, uh, with somewhat wild abandon, um, and you're the kind of guy like me who likes to hang back a little bit, yeah, pull out your Telesto, spray the back of his guardian down, dress me up, dress with me your projectiles, up, projectiles, <laughs> turn him into a trip mine, essentially, exactly, and a he'll, running charge, he'll go running in, and he will <laughs> literally explode himself all, right. all over the uh, enemy. Can't wait to see that, and uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, uh, we're gonna take. We we'll need to take a look at this. Let's take a look uh, full screen at uh, the thousand yard stare. Uh, yep. Easily acquired through uh, participation in the uh, story campaign, courtesy of the vanguards. Let's take a look at this. This is the most equipped special weapon in the history of our living social world. Yeah. It's definitely a popular Destiny sniper rifle. Yeah. So what are we doing about this? It's everywhere. Um. So yeah, I mean. That 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 graph kind of speaks for itself. Is the thing that most people are using right now, um, and I think there's a lot of reasons that people are, have gravitated towards this weapon. And I think one of those reasons is that um, you know a lot of people have farmed this weapon. They've been trying to get a really good perk roll, and yeah. they've found that, and yeah. they like it. Yeah, and it's what they want to run. Um, and we don't want to take that away from them. We absolutely okay. want to honor that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's my job to. Make people feel like they have options. Right? Yes. I don't. We don't want loadouts to stagnate and uh, and sit on any one weapon for too long. Okay. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove uh, a couple bullets out of the inventory. So again, okay. piggybacking on top of the sniper rifle change, uh, your thousand yard stare is gonna have a little bit less ammo inventory. But other than that, that perfect perk roll that you've uh, yeah. gone out there to, to find and, and use uh, is, is okay. going to be consistent. It so. does have a stronger scope, too, though. So I'm, I'm looking more across right. the room instead of just across the way at the dude that just ran around the corner. Correct. So yeah. Yeah. it's so a longer range weapon. It, is, it does subscribe to all the sniper rifle changes. It's not a battle yep. rifle. Yep. But I'm sure you'll find a way to use it because you're awesome. Uh, and uh, here we go. King's Fall weapons, yep. including this heavy. Yes, the uh, the Quillum's Terminus, Quillum Terminus, uh, Harold Quillum's Terminus and Quillum's Term Terminus. Yes, two guns that are basically the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, so tongue twister with a yeah. trigger. Uh, so we uh, we basically uh, reduce the inventory okay. on this gun. Okay. So you're going to get uh, less bullets. I'm sure there's plenty of PvP players out there who are who get killed four or five times by the same guy sure. with the same ammo yeah. brick. That thing again? Yeah, that I've thing seen up, a lot of people just on an insane this. streak. Yep. Um, so. So now, now your options are wait it out because he doesn't have as much uh, ammo anymore or get good and kill him. Sure, yeah. get good and kill him. Yeah. Words to live by. Uh, and then, yeah, by. as far as the rest of the King's Fall weapons, uh, we did a, a global uh, increase on reload speed. So okay. they're all going to reload a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, and Anguish of Driston, the, the assault rifle, got a small stability boost as okay. well. Okay. But yeah, let's go to some gameplay now. Yes, we take you live to our Crucible exhibition. Uh, they're playing Rumble, so it is every Warlock for itself, and uh, we're taking a look at Soros Regime, so what would you point out here? Um, so I'm not sure what which style they're running on this one right now. If you want to shoot for a little bit so we can see that. Oh yeah, so that's the Focus Fire style, and as you can see, Bam. range now to your advantage, Yep. so you probably want to hang back and take a little bit more um, uh, slower paced combat, um, do a little bit more range with this guy. Heavy ammo's up. Uh, how often does uh, heavy ammo spawn now in Rumble? Uh, it spawns, what, after five minutes? After five minutes. Uh, Once during yeah, the game? Yeah, I believe is what Lars says. Okay. So uh, whatever Lars says. Yeah, whatever Lars says. So here we go. Here's now the thorn. thorn. Um, so as you can see, you're doing less damage, and that uh, the pulse uh, disengages a lot sooner than it used to. Yeah. Um, Those were some missed shots. That warlock was fighting the good fight and, and jumping all <laughs> over the place. So let's, um, um, so let's still, take a look at a cleaner engagement with the thorn. Yeah. So... And so he got two stacks on there, so it's still stacks. But yeah, as you can see, the um, the the poison wears off a lot sooner than it used to. Mm -hmm. um, so it does a really cool thing where it still uh, it feels the same to use that gun. You're still getting the same benefit. Yep. Um, Good kill. But those those poison ticks rarely, rarely actually kill the guy mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. uh, the victim doesn't feel like they're on timeout for so long. They don't feel like they have to sit around. Yeah, we're still on a um, good run here. It it eliminates the uh, I think I believe it was like a two or three body shot kill that you could get with those things so that yep. that doesn't happen anymore um, but you do you still get the you still get the the great benefit of of putting the poison damage over time on the guy okay and then seeing the damage numbers tick through walls but also because it disengages now uh, a little bit faster is that you sort of get a hint of where they might be going to disengage okay but um, it doesn't 
give you exact positioning anymore. As long as that person keeps disengaging, they have a much stronger chance of getting away so and being able uh, to fight back. So there's the thorn. There you have it. We saw some interesting yeah. things there. I saw the thorn shut down a, a storm trance. Uh, and there was some, you know, some good uh, kill streaks there. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so this player should also have uh, Thiessen in their uh, uh, special slot. So this is uh, we can look at the fusion rifle changes here. Okay. Fusion. Um, so yeah, just across the board, your uh, shot grouping is going to be much more tighter on these guns yep. now. They'll be a lot more accurate. A nice little bit stable. easier to predict uh, um, where where your burst is going to land. Okay, cool. What else can we take a look at here? What else? Oh, here we go. Here's the last here word. Here we go. Last word. Please still be awesome. Please still be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Easy to hit the guy when he stands still. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, Not so easy when he's jumping around and punching you, finishing yeah. you off with a fusion rifle. All right, let's see a last word kill. Just for all those uh, for all those people out there with the soul of a cowboy, let's, yeah. let's restore no their pressure hope and their faith. Anything. Oh, oh there we go. Here we go. Back up on the horse, cowboy. Back up on that horse, cowboy. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, oh and it, no. what a time to reload. Yeah. There we go. And whoever that was was a great sport. But, uh, yeah, it's still a nasty weapon. Still yeah. doing some work. There you go. So It yeah. still moves the needle. Experiences are, are purely anecdotal. You know, the, these, these encounters could play in all kinds of different ways. But, yeah, we've done a lot of play testing, and this is still an extremely combat viable tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and so, and then in his special slot, we've got the thousand yard stare. There so, it is. He's, yep. He is running the short gaze scope. So this is one of the scopes that has had their zoom pushed out a little bit, and mm -hmm. there's an extra two fr two frames of zoom time yeah. as he's zooming in. I am not a sniper at all, but it still feels really clumsy to me in that small hallway. Here, it's a better suited weapon. Yeah, and then earlier uh, when he wasn't on the spot, uh, we actually saw some some close range combat sniping on Exodus Blue. With this thing mm -hmm. uh, that I think will will prove that it's still possible. It's just a little bit less responsive. Okay. And if you if you want to get the same gameplay that you have now, yeah, you just got to back up a little bit. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, the spare change. So this is the uh, lowest rate of fire uh, pulse rifle. Okay. So these damage on these ones came up a little bit. Um, th you are going to increase. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more consistent to get uh, two. Sh I, I should say two burst headshots. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you land all your headshots in two bursts, uh, you could sometimes kill a guardian depending on his armor stat. Jesus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And now that's a little bit more common. So again, we're encouraging people to aim for the head. Um, and then, uh, yeah, your, your cleanup kills and team shooting is going to be a little bit more effective. This okay. Now too. And uh, and it took a, and it took a grenade to stop Bonnie's kill streak there. <laughs> all right. Um, and then uh, let's take a look at. Uh, so this is her, her memory. memory. Yeah. So this is the new uh, um, Queen's assault rifle, which is going to be launching on April 12th. Um, and this is a low rate of fire weapon. Um, I believe this perk roll might actually have focus fire on it as well. So this is going to be super slow. Yeah, um, really slow. This is basically Look at that. like your, your baby Suros, but it is, uh, it is pretty nasty. These things are pretty effective now. So I'm hoping this, uh, this makes some of the auto rifle players feel like that they have options aside from Doctrine of Passing. You should have just called it Baby Soros because um, that sounds adorable. Baby Soros. Can you yeah. imagine? You're just like, I got a Baby Soros. Yeah. <laughs> Drinks Guardian Tears, not milk. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so yeah, these are, these are going to be, uh, like hopefully more, uh, more people will adopt these guns. I would, okay. I would love to see that. All right, and uh, then uh, our last um, sampling of weapons here in this uh, Loadout. So yeah, this is the uh, this is the doctrine of passing with slightly less damage. Um, I really want to emphasize that it was slightly less, uh, so that if you know if you get a bead on a target and and you're pretty much locked in on them, yeah, you're still able to melt them pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, the, you know, it's it's when you get out of the effective range or when you're trying to engage multiple targets, um, or like like you saw there, if you're having a hard time like actually getting your your reticle on the target, yeah. It's going to be a little bit less lethal, yep. and it's just it's just meant to sort of like smooth out some of the edge cases and make this gun a little bit less dominant, but still an effective combat. This tool. has definitely become one of those polarizing weapons. I see Doctor of Passing enter the conversation often, yep. And it's either you know I love using it and I have it equipped, or I hate getting killed with that gun. And uh, you know we're on a good kill streak here. Uh, it's working better up close, although uh, you know the Storm Caller <laughs> is a nasty, nasty beast. Sure uh, and we'll find out exactly what is about to befall that storm caller in yeah. just a moment when we'll, we bring uh, Grant out to sit yeah. on the couch. And then, um, last but not least, is our new uh, uh, Drake's Promise. So, um, so yeah, the way this works is very similar to the uh, tracking perk on rocket launchers. Yep. 
So as you aim down the sights, you will acquire a target and then the projectiles will lock to it. So you want to aim it. Yep. Definitely want to aim it. Uh, unlike yeah. the rocket launcher tracking perk, there is no audio. So if, if you're familiar with like truth and you know you can aim down the sights and you sort of get that beeping audio, sure, sure. it lets you know that you have a target locked. Uh, there's nothing like that for this gun. You just have to trust. But um, it is Greg's promise. Uh, Greg Pang, our weapons designer, um, oh, okay. <laughs> he, he worked on this. Um, it has become uh, Greg's promise. He did a great job. Uh, the, we, there has been a little bit of work on the projectiles um, because once we did the new uh, locking stuff, uh, it was extremely, extremely good. Um, yeah. And now it's, uh, it's a little bit more balanced out now. Sounds so. scary. I mean, when you do that, when you say, okay, now this gun has tracking rounds and they work a lot better, <laughs> yeah. you're always kind of like, all right, I'm going to yeah. give this to the community. And it's like, uh, let's see what happens. It this thing could much. become... The yeah. first and last word in crucible <laughs> combat, but yeah. uh, you know we'll we'll keep paying attention. We'll keep studying them. We'll look at the UR data. We'll look at uh, you know the the usage graphs and see yeah. if it you know takes off like a rocket the same way Mida did when we Oof. brought it forward. Yeah. But uh, if you're playing in the crucible, we are watching you and we are studying you and uh, we're reading the things that you're talking about on the forum. And uh, you know these are the conversations that we have internal. So while we not may not respond to every single tweet talking about weapons. Uh, you know, Noosk and uh, the people who create and design these things uh, are always studying you and uh, hoping to better serve you as a player. So yep. the April update's doing some great stuff uh, in that area. Uh, we'll see how people respond to all of it. There's always another game update after this one. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. My game. work is never done. <laughs> yeah. Fashion is never finished. Yep. John, thank you so much for being on the show. Honor. And... Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the Warlock exhibition here for just a moment and uh, stick around. Our next subject matter expert will be Grant Mackay to talk about these Warlocks and the way they're fighting each other. Overall, I'm hearing some good stuff, man. Some good stuff. Dude, this room temperature water is amazing. Didn't bring mine. You got to get yourself some of that. Right. So welcome to the show. Thanks. Grant Mackay, everyone. Uh, this is a newer member of our gameplay team. Correct. Uh, it seems like just yesterday, although it wasn't, that uh, <laughs> I, I showed you around the studio and I was joking around. I was like, oh, so you're the man who's here to nerf the hunter. Right. Uh, back then, the hunter was a constant topic of conversation. Uh, since then, we've seen some other subclasses come up and go out of, you know, sort of the main conversations. You know, when we first launched the Taken King, it was all about uh, the Solar Titan and those hammers. You know, when you heard that anvil strike, you know, it was just like the only thing you would do is run. Uh, now the storm callers are very much a thing that people are talking about. Uh, how do you react to those sorts of conversations? You know, what are the things you think about when you take a look at the way subclasses balance each other in the sandbox? Well, mostly after you gave me so much trouble about the Hunter, I just kind of looked into what you played and decided to nerf that. Oh, okay. Thank right. you so much. So, <laughs> so it's my fault that we're having a Warlock design pass. It's not today. actually, yeah. So it's, it's I, I was gentle, as, okay. as you asked on, on Twitter. Um, what we actually look at is how people are playing them, wh what they're using, and yeah. how, how actually successful that they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if something's being used too much or too little, we try to use that as the... The metric to sort of balance mm -hmm. on if if, uh, if everybody's doing doing warlock exactly one way, that's kind of a problem. It's kind of boring, right? Give people incentives to embrace different archetypes, and empower the different kind of play styles that we have. That okay. sort of thing. Okay, cool. Well, um, we have uh, put the warlocks under the microscope. Let's see how they're performing in the crucible, and uh, as we watch these people, um, we'll uh, we'll load up one subclass at a time. And uh, we'll have you give us a sense of what you've changed and how that is impacting the way that uh, they're performing in this Rumble fight. So, uh, who do we have up first? This is the Sun Singer. All right. And actually, you just saw him try to uh, melee his way to victory with a flame shield there. And one of the uh, one of the more contentious changes, uh, we've actually lowered the amount of shield that's going to provide okay. for Sun Singers who try to run up and. Uh, and sort of win every every fight, and we've also reduced the frequency at which you can acquire a flame shield. Okay. Um, beyond that, we 
we looked at the other melees to try and bring them up a little bit so that there were other play styles there. So if you're running something like Solar Wind, that's going to be av available a lot more if you want to like push a shotgunner out of your face or something. Gotcha. Um, and then also Brimstone, uh, m more specifically in PvE, has uh, got a nice damage boost so you can cause like little miniature star explosions and have all sorts of fun. So talk about the super. This super is active now. So this is Radiance. Um, what we did was try to make some trade-offs in it. So if uh, if you're running Fireborn like 90% of the other players, yeah. you're going to notice uh, it's not going to last quite as long. I think actually someone posted a video analysis of one of our previous Twitch streams and actually called me out on that uh, before we, we had talked about it. Uh, but also we try to we try to make it a little smoother when you're throwing the grenades. You're going to see uh, maybe one or two more grenades in your super if you're not running Fireborn, uh, and you're gonna you're gonna see some extra buffs for your allies if you're running one of the other upgrades, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, let's take a look at uh, our next subclass, and uh, what do we have here? This this would be the Stormcaller. My right. favorite. Yes. All right. This was uh, this was one of the first things you worked on here. Yes. Correct. Okay. So, uh, how is the storm caller different? What have you done? So, uh, we just wanted to adjust a few player frustrations. Um, a lot of people were a little upset with uh, you know seeing a storm storm caller pop their their landfall like like we just saw right yep, there. Yep. There we go. And it would uh, blow up a Titan bubble and blind everyone. So we've. We've reined that in a little. Uh, you can't blow up Titan bubbles anymore, for example. And, and watch it drain. Right, and it's not gonna it's not gonna blind everyone on the map anymore. Um, also, the the builds that some people were running, where they chose all the perks to make their their storm trance last essentially, you know, half the match or, <laughs> or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, we've reined a lot of those in, mm -hmm. and we've tried to make it a little bit more decision based. So if you're sort of spamming your arc lightning everywhere, yeah. it's going to drain a lot faster now. Uh, it's not as free anymore. You're going to have to think about it a little bit more. Uh, but again, we've tried to make sure that uh, you know we didn't just straight destroy the class. They're no, not they're not, not in that bad of a place actually in terms of the actual statistics for their kill death ratios and that sort of thing. So. Okay. So we gave some back. Uh, a little bit of it was aimed at PVE, where uh, the aura that you have around you, uh, if you take the perks for that that causes damage, yeah. is a little stronger. And uh, some more sort of user-friendly things on uh, on how they get their energy back in certain places and that kind of thing. It, it, that'll be in the patch. It does though. seem as if uh, ever since we sort of teased that the Warlocks had a different future, uh, the Stormcaller has definitely sort of dominated that conversation. That was the right. one everyone looked at and said, well, if you're working on Warlocks, you know, but Stormcaller has had a, a glorious birth and uh, still going to be a badass. Uh, any other changes that you would call out about the Stormcaller? I mean, uh, nothing specific. It'll, it'll all come in the, uh, the patch notes. We've, you know, moved some, moved some minor numbers around and all that sort of thing, but... Uh, mm -hmm probably don't want to hear me ramble about that too long. Well, and really, you know, it's it's not as much about the math, it's about the way things feel. And uh, if, uh, you know, the super requires a little bit more decision making, I mean, that really is the, the storm caller experience. It's like, oh, my super's, you know, charged. Really don't need to think about this. Let's just pop it and go, you know, right. and just and just maraud through the map and just mow down anything you see. Uh, so if people have to make more better decisions about when they use it and when they un actually unleash the lightning, um, then, uh, you know, that will create, hopefully, some more interesting engagements. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, nothing left to talk about except for my own personal favorite. Uh, no offense to your Stormcaller. I used it. It's actually uh, my PvE actually. class. But when I'm in the Crucible, uh, I'm, void, I'm void fanged up, and I'm uh, all about the Nova Bomb, all about the Nova Lance, actually, because I, I love just having that extra rocket launcher on my person. So, so be gentle. And uh, and talk to me about what you've done. What have you done to my Void Walker? So we didn't do anything to Nova Bomb. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm glad now that you talked about that so much that you know I left it alone. Yeah. Uh, what we did try to do uh, was emphasize a sort of gameplay personality that the Void Walker has. So so they're lagging a little bit behind the other subclasses in terms of output. Okay. Um, so we tried to tried to bring them up a little, uh, and we did that with sort of his energy vampire abilities. So. Okay. You can see right now as he's playing, uh, he's using sort of his melees and his grenades to, uh, to sort of destroy people and yeah. rip out their souls and turn that into more super energy or more grenade energy or okay. to, to heal himself. Yeah. So the, the specific changes are, are 
again in the patch notes, but it, it's all about that cycle of uh, using your abilities correctly to make sure you always have an ability available. That sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, and my, my playing style is my thumb skills are not amazing, is definitely as a support player, definitely is somewhat of a brawler. You know, I wear the void fangs because I like the grenades. Uh, I definitely try to punch my way out of any close encounter. Uh, so, I'll, pardon me? It's interesting that you picked Warlock for that. You know, I like it. This is how stupid I am. I just like the way they dress. I mean, yeah, maybe I should have been a Titan, <laughs> but uh, I also, I just, I like, uh, I like the glide. I like the fluidity of the movement also. So I'm definitely one of those players that makes emotional decisions, but the, uh, the changes that you've made to the Void Walker are something that I'll probably have a lot of fun with. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what specifically could we call out as we watch this, uh, this Warlock fight? So... As, that was well, a hell of a punch. <laughs> nice. He he had it going before, but he's kind of wasted his cooldowns. Not to put him on the spot or anything, but um, you've probably noticed even when we they were playing earlier uh, with the thorn and stuff. Yeah. If you if you catch it correctly, you're gonna get a, another grenade back really really quickly. Okay. Uh, on your on your energy drain ability, so that's kind of the thing that that happens when you when you melee people yeah. with your charge or when you when you use. Uh, some of your other perks and that kind of thing. I would freely admit to you that I don't notice much. All I do is I see I see pretty combat and, and awesome explosions. You can see it right and, there as, there his, as his cooldown was coming back. Okay. Very very quickly. He also is using his melee pretty freely. We've we've sort of improved the the Voidwalker responsiveness in their melees. So mm -hmm. uh, made them all more like surge. They happen immediately on hit. Uh, so if you're needing that that energy back or that health, it's going to happen more immediately now. Okay. So the the Void Walker is a he's kind of he's kind of getting bodied right now though. A proper vampire. <laughs> well, you know these are these are some of the the more skilled players that we have. I mean these are these are our PVP testers. So yes, go, Nova Bomb. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Nice comeback. But it's a tough room. It's a tough room, especially when everyone's playing as a warlock, which I'm sure we can both agree is the best subclass in the game. It appeals to the best type of Destiny player, <laughs> the most intelligent warrior in the Crucible. Are any right. of these points landing with you? I mean, no. this is this is I got I got I got the peanut <laughs> gallery over here. Like you guys are like dueling Caesars over here. Um, well, uh, on, obviously, you know, watching this unfold on a stream is one thing. Uh, playing it for yourselves is quite another. And uh, we will have, as you promised, the full patch notes, which will explain all of these changes in uh, you know, greater detail. We'll give you the stats, we'll give you the math, we'll give you the things that you can debate and explain. And uh, really, it, it all comes down to the way these things feel when they get in and play for themselves. That's when we really learn what we've created, yeah? Truth, yes. Yeah. And then we get to observe and readjust. And it's not gonna be perfect the first time, probably, but well, we'll get there. What is perfection? Perfection <laughs> is a thing we strive for. So, um, last, uh, last thing we would... Uh, address. I uh, got a lot of questions in chat about uh, Firebolt grenades. Oh, here we go. Um, so yeah, uh, that was the other thing that was talked about a lot. Uh, on top of Storm Trance being too long, people people were really worried about the dot. Um, yeah. And the truth is, there's no simple solution there. So uh, dots aren't just about the damage they deal. Yeah. I think uh, John got into that a little bit. They are also about have the amount of time you can see your opponent even through a wall because you see numbers coming out of them and they're also about stopping their shield regen so that they can't re-engage mm -hmm. you um, and so a lot of the a lot of the Sunsinger subclass is built around it's built around these dots and using them with firebolt firebolt on its own is actually not that strong but it's more the the Viking funeral build as okay. it's called yeah and without essentially rebuilding uh, an entire section of mm -hmm. this subclass yep. There was no there was no simple way to adjust that, so we kind of left it alone. We we looked at other other points of frustration like flame shield and tried to take a little bit of the power out there. And okay. hopefully, hopefully that's enough. Uh, but we're still watching. So know. the word is firebolt grenades at this point in time are basically unchanged. Basically unchanged, yes. Okay. Not basically, they are unchanged. They are unchanged. All right. Well, every guardian needs to have something that they're good at, and uh, <laughs> firebolt grenades remain so a menace. Are you just did you just call out the people that rely on fireball grenade? Is that what? No, that what I'm not said? calling out anybody. <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not. You, know, you play, play the game the way you want. I basically admitted my crutch, so you're certainly welcome to yours. Right. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's the state of the warlock uh, as it will be on April 12th when we deploy the April update. 
Uh, thank you so much for uh, shedding some light on the subject. Do you get it? Shedding some light yeah, on the subject? That's pretty good. You should, I would say you shed about <laughs> 335 light on that subject. Wow. Maybe 330 light. We'll shed 335 in okay. the patch notes. Okay. Yeah, bring it home. So, okay, <laughs> bring it home here. Uh, that's really everything that we have to talk about on uh, this, the third and final live preview of uh, the content that you'll find in the April update. So it's been our pleasure to sit on these couches and talk to you about what's coming to Destiny and how the game is about to change. Uh, I'm Deej from Bungie. I'd like to thank Grant Mackay, uh, as well as John Wesniewski and Lars Bakken, who visited with us earlier in the show. Uh, it can't be said enough, April 12th is the day when all of these changes go live. So we will uh, begin the work of deploying those things to your consoles, uh, probably around 10 a.m. if everything goes well. Uh, follow us in all the usual places for uh, signs and uh, we'll let you know when we unleash the new bits. Uh, download them, please play, please let us know what you think. Uh, please get in there and give your guardian uh, new ways to become powerful, and uh, we'll see how things evolve and we'll see how things unfold. Go Void Walker. Go Void Walker. <laughs> so uh, thanks again so much for watching. Uh, I'm Deej from Bungie, that is the end of our show. We'll be back on the Bungie blog tomorrow with more detail on all of these fronts. What else? Nothing. No. See you in the reef. That's the show.